This is TV18 and you're watching CNBC TV18. Hello, welcome to a very special conversation. Gulzar's work has seeped into the cultural consciousness of several generations. His words have helped us express our innermost thoughts across the spectrum of human emotions and concerns. The myriad confusions, sublime joy, fathomless grief, idealized romantic love, the playfulness of life and a moral compass for it, the details that add up to our unique and yet universal experience, he continues to address all of them in his work. He has a new book out, A Passion Project, that started about eight years ago. It's called A Poem A Day, where he has handpicked or selected poems by nearly 300 contemporary poets and translated them into Hindustani, which is a combination of Hindi and Urdu for all of us. Gulzar Saab, it is wonderful to see you. Thank you very much for this for this new gift to the work to to the world of art and culture. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you, and very nice to see you and and the, talk to those whom I can't see. <laughs> How are you doing? This is such a uh, incredibly unique year in terms of human experience for all of us. How are you as we head towards the end of what is going to be a year that goes down in world history as a year which changed the course of life for many people? This year has been, uh, for, for the entire world, it has been a very different kind of a year on the different kind of a, uh, I think, get together also. Yes. Without meeting each other. I mean, the whole world seems to be in communication with each other. And it has never been before. You know, when I look at this book, beautiful, red, hard-bound, gold-embossed, heavy book with 365 poems, I feel it's in a way uh, almost sort of, uh, yes, it, 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 it's almost like you saying, uh, you know, thumbing your nose at this digital world that has caged us in the last few years, you know, where everything is through a screen. Our reality has gone into digital screens and here we are, you offer us a book. Is there a, is there a sense of uh, mischief or even in, the, in that? Uh, no, not exactly, because uh, while uh, we used to write to each other on paper, we write on uh, digitally now on the screen, and that's what we have been. And this is an experience for myself, talking to you like this. Otherwise, you would have called me to the studio, isn't it? Or come to your study if you had invited us, whichever. Yes, that's true. This is all very new and different, isn't it? I would have visited your studio and I would have been there sitting with you, having a cup of tea and discussing poems. And uh, here we are sitting at our own places uh, apart and yet uh, it's, it's a new experience for me altogether. Altogether a new experience. And uh, uh, in this, about this book, as we were talking about, and this has been an effort of last nine years for mm. me. There was a notion in my mind. You don't mind if I say Hindi in Hindi. Absolutely. I am very comfortable with that. And I don't know how many of you don't come. And I have Hindi. If you have Bengali Hindi, then people are laughing. There is a lot of problem. When you say Bengali, you don't want to say Bengali. You don't want to say Bengali. No, it's just that this always used to bother me. In schools and colleges, what these students are, when they take up the poetry book, the selections of masters and old masters and the great high poetry, they don't relate to your times. They don't relate to what is happening around in the world. I mean, in their times. Hmm. Everything is in past. Yes. I, I had a desire to reach the contemporary poetry to the younger generation. Mm. They must know the poetry is a relevant subject. The poetry is a live subject. Yes. 
poetry is is live and it it uh, relates to all the the to to the world which they see around them this was an important factor so from there i i took up uh, this this work of uh, the poetry which i heard and the poetry which i read and from where i became a poet hmm. i put a line of 1947 the independent india to present the present um, poetry to the youngsters of of the india which they know hmm. so that was the effort and that is where i should say that uh, it was not possible to work this much and publish a book like this but harper collins came to my help there and that is where mr uh, anand padmanabhan and uh, uh, udayan hmm your uh, editor very they he the editor hmm so they helped me to publish this work finally Mm. i started collecting that to see the face of india i must know what is happening in the other languages of india mm. i mean it couldn't be possible that only hindi or only urdu or only english or only one language would be able to uh, present the total face of indian poetry one had to relate to other languages what is mm. happening in malayalam what is happening in tamil or what's happening in bangla but gulzar sahab what i find interesting is how you decide you decided to translate these different languages the poems that you selected in these different languages into what you call hindustani um yeah. why did you not feel that you wanted to leave it at english and not use english as a link language because i know you've thought of that deeply the english uh, as the link language was already there yes why one could pick up uh, poems from different languages in english and one didn't have to work much then hmm. but that for the languages which uh, are not there published or uh, in uh, which have not been translated into english then hmm. for example kokobo that's one of the languages of of northeast or uh, say adi that's another language of the northeast and uh, it would be hard and difficult to find out those uh, uh, tribal languages but the poetry has been coming even from tri tribal languages yes. Yes. To, uh, to, which was not available in english and secondly hindustani was the purpose because in hindustani uh, culturally we are bound with each other all the languages are bound with each other culturally they are linked with each other for example i should say that if i say pangat or if i say mangal sutra you will have to give the detail what is it but in our own languages we would understand what it is what it if signifies I, yes i say ke arjun ka teer ja ke laga chidiya ki aankh mein to english mein aap translate to kar lenge but then you have to know the source of arjun which you have to explain in indian language they all know who is arjun we are talking about given that this was the goal this was the goal to capture india in the voice of its poets and contemporary poets uh, what were some of the filters you used because this is a mammoth herculean task isn't it so what did you what were the filters you used to zero in on the poets on the languages and then finally the poems that would make it to this book i had to of course naturally do a lot of research work for this and the, the goal was first of all myself i wanted to educate my own self what is happening in the what is the face of indian poetry just to know what is the face of of total indian poetry and i found it very interesting and uh, it became interesting learning also for me not only for others it was even for myself it was a very very good uh, uh, a trip to educate myself once again with hmm. what happening in poetry of contemporary india so then that attracted me and then naturally you want to share it with others six seven eight languages one can understand one can be close but not with all the languages yes so that's where i had to work hard 
and uh, approach the if the poet is alive approach the poet sit with them hindustani can communicate in those areas those languages whereas english may not reach there yeah in fact i was it's interesting you mentioned that you approach the poet some of the poets uh, you know if they if they are alive and they had done perhaps their own english translations of the original language when you approach them did you make it a point to go back to each poet with the translation wherever possible and did you and and if they had feedback how did you react to it no i you could not reach to each one of them hmm of them i could reach some of them i could uh, connect and communicate with them some i had to reach to people who uh, knew that language mm. if not somebody from that language yes you could explain it to me for example i should say for all the south indian language mr k sachidanandan hm he helped a lot hm mr a j thomas thomas yeah academy he is the editor of indian literature uh, he provided me with the uh language poetry languages uh, uh from the sahit academy from because they had the publications mr thomas helped a lot in that and then he could also guide me to the people who knew that language or ex- those who were expert in that language were there any reactions uh, from some of the poets who you read out what you had written or you sent them a copy of your translation in hindustani did you have any interesting reactions from anybody i uh, know the first of all i had to get it approved by the author that this is what they are trying to say and got it translated in english right and because there are both the languages in this now yes. that this is one link language which is already prevalent in the literate world literate india and hindustani which is not even literate but they know the language somewhere that is where hindi films have helped a lot because of hindi films that kind of hindustani reaches everywhere yes that's true and you don't have to tell them what is roti na roti ya dal bana do so in english you may have to struggle to explain to them yes but now they would understand what it is so the power the power of the hindi of hindi films and hindi cinema do you think gulzar saab that as someone who is a poet and then a lyricist that being able to communicate or use your uh, ability to uh, to to write poetry and and sort of adapt it to songs and the music of hindi cinema do you think that's a great good fortune for a poet because you know thanks to your book there are so many poets that i have encountered as a result of your book for the first time and i hate saying this because it conveys my ignorance but that is the truth and reality so do you think that as to to get to be a lyricist of film songs whether it's hindi or any other language is actually quite good fortune for a poet but that true that uh, it is finally this language uh, the the language which i i used in this and the which i called hindustani because that's the language we we use in cinema also hmm. to have an all india approach that that that's the part of a learning which i had during films and hindustani naturally even even i think in 48 gandhi ji also had said that stop calling it a hindi or urdu stop calling it hindustani because it will it's going to finally pick up that dialect hmm. pick up raja i should say hmm. that diction even today common man that speak common man speaks hindustani he doesn't speak a pure hindi or a pure urdu secondly uh, you don't speak the same urdu everywhere you don't speak the same hindi everywhere not even english hmm. you don't speak the same english everywhere you know bangla you don't speak the same bengali everywhere it changes with the with the area or with the region wherever you are so that is the that is the capability of calling it hindustani because it will pick up a few phrases or few uh, expressions or words from from the area which which you have gone to 
that is that is the beauty of hindustani that is what makes it fast the world is moving faster than ever before producing unprecedented amounts of data processing it with precision and innovation at inconceivable speeds intelligence is everywhere but have you tapped into its potential join us to explore new realms powered by the internet of things and artificial intelligence at cnbc tv 18 and intel present business comes alive intelligence everywhere coming soon mcx ipf presents a monk who trades do i look like i wear saris and that to for rupees 24000 I'm calling the cops. Looks like someone has stolen your credit card password. Password? I'm not for passing around. This is the lady who swiped the card yesterday. Oh, that is your wife. Oops, love is food, blind and expensive. Do you still want to call the cops? Treat your password like your toothbrush. It is best not to share it. Do not share your internet trading account's password with anyone. 21वीं सदी भारत की हो ये हमारा सपना ही नहीं ये हम सभी की जिम्मेदारी भी है इसका मार्ग एक ही है आत्मनिर्भर भारत Let's march together on the path towards a glorious future. ITC presents Swabhiman Bharat, an initiative by Network 80. Presented by ITC. A dream that can't be shattered, a belief that can't be shaken, and a spirit that can never be broken. For over 21 years, India's number one English business news channel has been the lifeline to your dreams. At every step, through every phase, empowering you with actionable information and opportunities, and helping you build a better today and an even better tomorrow. CNBC TV 18, celebrating 21 years of business leadership. Smart Money, a special show where we feature marquee guests with decades of experience. But the special guest on the show is you. Yes, our viewers. Live stock queries and investing lessons. Higher the gap between strike price and current market price, lesser is the premium. From India's most trusted market gurus. One has to focus on capital allocation, which will determine how much return the business is going to generate. Join us as we decode, debunk, and demystify the markets. When market is falling, you shouldn't be worried, and when market goes up, you shouldn't make merry. That stillness will take you places. Tune into Smart Money at these times. Talk to us a little bit about your discovery of poetry. It began in school. Uh, it was something that you. considered as a profession or as a vocation that you wanted to adopt is that correct and that early on it for someone to say i want to be a poet you don't hear that very often or regularly isn't it so that uh, we'll speak some other time when i have to speak of my how i grew up and how i picked up languages and how i was brought up punjabi is my mother tongue bulle shah and the varshar uh, uh, i'm at home with them because that in my mother tongue but then i had contact with other languages even in school and even in college later on and uh, learn to do learn to do from always 
what would you say you see the role of the poet and the writer especially when we go through some of the poets you have included here you know the great marathi poet kusum magraj uh, you begin with haldar nag uh, who's a padma shri who's writing in kosi you you've written a poem inspired by his poem called letter to haldar uh, you know there is um, uh, sitanshu yashash chandra gujarati poet you have uh, in your book I mean, these are just a few of the names of the 279 poets you've got in this book. Um, when you look at some of their the work that you've used, what would you say people see the role of a poet as being? What do you, Gulzar Saab, see the role of the poet in contemporary times and time immemorial? Today's poet, what what the poet in any of these Indian languages who's writing is relevant for the to the people is relevant because they can understand it can becomes their voice if mm. it's a this a poet writes about that poet if it's hunger we poet, poet writes about poet writes about the hunger of today is a struggle of a labor or this struggle of a kisan of the farmer if you go back to the syllabus of the school and college textbooks you will not find these connections that is what was inspiring and what is that i feel it should be done and poets do keep their times and uh, their their society relevant in their poetry that's, that's what is what is required and that is what what is happening but it has not been reaching people that's one of the purpose of doing this book so that you know that this poetry or the poetry done today is is a is a living poetry it is it is relating to their everyday life example i have translated kusum agraj a full book of kusum agraj and being in maharashtra where you and especially in bombay you hear at least four to five languages every day they cross your they, they come yes. fall in yes you listen to at least four to five languages two three languages almost every hindustani speaks hmm. every indian speaks two to three languages and uh, that is what is relevant and that's what i i i think should go ahead with it you have very many female women poets poetesses in this book um do you see a change in the way women have expressed themselves over time when it comes to self expression and women have been writing very dynamic poetry i should say mumang um, for example writing in adi Hmm. Adi, he writes a very dramatic poetry. Hmm. Hmm. They are they they may not add that far with that. I mean, they they are far with everybody in the world. They they don't have to be mentioned as women. Yes, yes. Ramdas, for example, if you have read her poetry, I I think one of the most dynamic poet we we had. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. and she wrote in malayalam as well as she wrote in english i uh, want to uh, bring movies into the picture because a lot of uh, people are familiar with your work as a songwriter and of course as a filmmaker we we were just talking about women poets and here we are in the movies where women have been uh, their expression and their feelings and voice has been articulated by men for a very very long time do you think sometimes that the very romanticized nature or expression when it comes to love in the woman's voice uh, that maybe if women were writing it themselves it might have been a little different not exactly but certain uh, perspectives i should say men could write about so the for example ye amrita pritam which she wrote the way she wrote i mean there are certain subjects which uh, was typically of uh, women subject and uh, i i i would speak for for example my daughter i if i mention meghna for the she wrote poetry in the beginning and then she made films also but a subject which came out from her own poems is is like philhal i don't a man would have thought of that subject like that yes the story of surrogacy and of friendship uh, yes 
I, I think that's that's what is very important. They have their own perspectives also. Mm-hmm. It, it is like for certain subjects, even man would have his own perspective. Mm-hmm. That apart. But I won't divide them as men poets and women poets. I, I call them all poets and writers. And wonderful writers and wonderful, if you say the uh, wonderfully women have participated in the growth of our literature. And I've included many of them in this. Yes. Uh, Gulzar Sahib, you made a film uh, in 1977 called Kinara. I bring it up because uh, for uh, perhaps in one of uh, rare occasions, you see a Hindi film actor playing the role of a poet. And there's this beautiful song that Dharminder sings, Ek hi khwab kai baar dekha hai maine, as to, to explain the difference between writing poetry and ordinary day conversation. Um, when you look back in that context of, of the of the poet do you feel poets get their due in society yes why not they have, they have all along you won't have a Ravindana Tagore otherwise you won't have a Jayanta Mahapatra today yes I mean these poets are I mean you got a Nobel Prize for a poet then I mean what are the other ways of recognizing it or their role in society and yet you don't have you don't have young children say we want to grow up and be a poet that i think that's what i was trying to get at sir i'm saying yes there is much more outside films also happening hmm. poetry. poetry is not every the entire the whole poetry is not happening in films only of course yes yes that is that's why i'm saying in all these languages you don't have to come to films to approach or to reach you the common man. Uh, Gulzar sahab, what are you working on? Uh, this book is now out with all of us. We can all access it. What have you moved on to working? Because I believe that you're at your desk in your study every day, crafting and working on something. This book, and then I'll give you another one. <laughs> and then you'll give us another one. Okay, that's lovely to hear. Thank you very much for this conversation. I wish you a lot of good luck and uh, a lot of good luck to this book and to all poets who have enriched our lives with their expression over the years. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anuradha. Thank you, Gulzar sahab.